Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I recently finished reading this very interesting book, Project-Based Teaching, How to Create Rigorous and Engaging Learning Experiences by Susie Boss with John Larmer, forward by Bob Lentz. And here's the back cover of the book um, and explains about the book. Uh, it's no secret that in today's complex world, students face unparalleled demands as they prepare for college careers and active citizenship. You can read this. Uh, this is the top back cover of the book. And then I have this. This is the bottom back cover of the book. Um, I'm creating this screencast on my 4K monitor, and I wanted it to be as readable as possible. So I divided up the image of the back cover of the book into two sections. So it makes it easier to read. Um, and here is the author of the book, the co-author, um, uh, Susie Boss. And I was curious, so I looked up and I found her TED Talk. And um, I encourage you to go look at her TED Talk. Very interesting. Whenever you look at it, whenever you're reading a book, almost go to see to see. Maybe the author has a TED Talk and you get to know the author better, and it might even help you decide whether to read the book or not read the book. Here is about the authors. Susie Boss is a member of the Buck Institute for Education's national faculty. So the Buck Institute of Education is a very interesting organization. They recently changed their name to PBL Works. Um, so you can read about her here. Uh, she's uh, well uh, regarded and very widely published. And then here's the other author, John Larmer is the editor-in-chief at the Buck Institute for Education. And this tells about him. You can read this. Um, you can pause the video and read this if you so care to. And then here I went to the Bucks Institute for Education website and I noticed that it's now called PBL Works, Project Based Learning Works. And so this is their website. And I encourage you to go there and follow them on Twitter. Uh, you'll learn some things by following them on Twitter. Retweet them. They're doing some very interesting um, work bringing schools forward. Uh, and <laughs> now here's the forward of the book. This is by Bob Lentz, who I know via Twitter. Um, and he explains, uh, I'll read just a little part here. Um, Furthermore, collaboration has become the norm. Most people in information age companies work and across teams. It has become a project-based world. 40% of people in the United States work as contract employees, moving from one client's project to another. This is expected to grow. Yet for the most part, we educate youth the same way we did over 100 years ago. So here is, this is another little part of the forward that I thought was worth pulling and including in this book review. Now, typical book reviews in text form, they might not have uh, as much um, the, the, the quotations, um, the quotes from the book tend to be shorter, but this is in video form, so I can include a larger section. And I don't think the authors are gonna mind, and I don't think the publishers are gonna mind that this is a longer kind of quote. Um, and I'm not gonna read it to you, you can read it on your own. I found this very interesting. Equity is a theme that permeates this book. It's our shared belief that all students, regardless of zip code, deserve opportunities for the meaningful engaged learning that happens in gold standard PBL. Uh, by the way, people in other um, countries, zip code is also uh, the American word for postal code. And here in the United States, we have often very disparities between wealthier and less wealthier zip codes. Disparities in education and health and about just about everything else. We thank the many fellow travelers, da, da, da. Finally, we thank editor Jenny Ostertag. Ostertag, that's a Scandinavian name. I lived in Denmark as a kid um, at ASCD for encouraging us to bring this book to readers. Okay. Why Classroom Culture Matters for PBL. This was a very interesting part of the book. And um, so uh, the school culture, the classroom culture, this is where you get the uh, astoundingly effective school principals, school superintendents. Some of the people that I admire on uh, on Twitter are these people who build the school culture um, and why it matters for um, project-based learning. Here's a little quote. 
In PBL, it's important to adopt routines that reinforce the culture of student-centered learning. If you don't want the teacher to be the class expert on all things, then encourage students to turn to one another as information sources with the routine. Ask three before me. So teachers should say, ask each other before you come to me. We are a learning community. Uh, the learning is uh, a function of the community interaction and that the learning comes from all sources, not just from the teacher. In fact, effective teachers learn a lot from students. Uh, I also included this little thing. A companion video about building the culture for PBL can be found at www.bie.org. So if you go to the Bucks Institute of Education website, uh, the, it probably redirects you to PBL Works. So it's probably fine for you to keep going to that website. Uh, I don't think the website's going to die. I think it's going to redirect. That's the way things work. Um, and I liked this quote. Um, this quote, I, uh, I pulled it out to share with you because, um, the point being made is that project based learning is a teaching skill that you can acquire. And, um, I like the second part down here. If you've watched a season PBL teacher in action, you may think that coaching and engagement are second nature. Dig a little deeper and you often find PBL teachers also wear the coaching hat in athletics, debate, drama, or other extracurricular activities. Um, engaging coaching are learnable skills that get better with practice. Of course, what's most exciting is that when students see effective teaching in this form, then when they themselves decide to become teachers, uh, they will have a role model. And that's how we can make effective schools. Um, and they can also do this, they can also do this kind of thing in outside of school settings, in whatever organizations they might belong to. Um, I like this quote, evidence of the messy middle. PBL, project-based learning is often described lovingly as messy learning. Don't hide the productive messes that come with making prototypes. Instead, keep it visible. I love that. And then over here, I pulled out this quote. This was a quote about the importance of enlisting the help of others. So uh, for the March on Nashville project, Kimberly Head Trotter knew that a specific technology tool called ThingLink would be essential for producing a digital map. And this teacher enlisted the... Um, the media specialist at the school for help so that uh, the teacher didn't have to be a master of the tool, the teacher just had to be a master of the lesson. And then what really endeared me to this book is references to other books. So I work at a public library and any book that references other books within the book gets bonus points from me. And so I love this thing. It says on your PBL bookshelf, and there's one, two, three, four, five other books that you can, as jumping off points, uh, for continuing your learning beyond this particular book. But I think this book is very interesting, useful. Ask your public library or school library to buy a copy and maybe buy a copy and give it to your favorite teacher or school principal or school superintendent. Or if you're feeling very kind-hearted, place a copy in a little free library near your house or maybe not near your house. This screencast was made using Simple Screen Recorder, free software on a ThinkPad, my X1 Carbon. I use Linux attached to a 4K monitor. If you want to view other book reviews I've done, you can go to sites like google.com slash site slash Phil Shapiro book reviews. And here is my contact information if you wanted to contact me. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's a nice way of saying thank you for the book reviews I like to make. And um, some friends of mine were asking me, they said, Phil, why do you go to the effort of making a book review in video form? It takes, it takes extra time and energy. Why don't you just like write a, a text book review and maybe post it on Amazon.com? And that's a, a fair enough question. And um, I have an answer. The reason I do book reviews in video form is that uh, they tend to be more engaging. They might reach a larger audience. It might reach an audience of people who are non-readers who might benefit from the content of the book and who may be able to get the book in audiobook format. And so uh, another reason I do my book reviews in video format is uh, to pay homage to the author's 
author or authors of the book who sometimes spent several years writing the book. And so it, if it's going to take me several hours, uh, that's uh, much, much less effort that I'm spending than they, than they are spending. Um, and I, it's an homage to the publisher and the editors. And um, so that's the reason I do my book reviews in video form. And I, I like to use free software so that other people can uh, use the same tools that I do. I'm using LibreOffice, the presentation program. Um, Simple Screen Recorder is my uh, program for making the screencast. Uh, I have a Logitech webcam, and I this uh, the webcam software is called GUVC View. GUVC View, and um, uh, a friend of mine said, Phil, I noticed there's like a yellow towel in the back of your video. Uh, what's that yellow towel doing there? And I said, uh, I put it there on purpose. I said, I put it there on purpose. It was a design choice because the yellow towel kind of matches the yellow thing over on the screen, right? It's like, uh, uh, it's a balancing. And then I have a blue shirt and that was, I did that on purpose. And then I uh, have a high quality audio and I did that on purpose. So, um, and I guess they might not be all that many other people who like to make book reviews with using open source software on a 4K monitor. So this is uh, something that I choose to do, but it's actually not my choice. I feel I, I must do it because here's all these interesting tools and somebody needs to explore them. So the 4K monitor gives me lots of pixels, 38, 40 pixels by 2160. So it's very interesting storytelling capabilities. I work at a library. I need to explore what storytelling capabilities there are. And currently I'm using it with book reviews, but I could conceivably be using it with lots of other purposes too. This is Phil Shapiro. Until next time.